Can you be atheist and heathen? It may seem contradictory, the lack of religious beliefs with the addition of a religion. But ask yourself, is there anything in heathenry that says you must have a theistic belief in gods? Is there a single source that dictates how you should and should not believe? Theism, from the Greek theoi, meaning gods, is the belief in deities. We've gone over different perspectives in my What Are the Gods video. Inerrancy, the belief that doctrine has no errors and is pure and correct, like evangelicals believe. Hard theism, believing in separate gods with their own thoughts, feelings, wills, and agency. Soft polytheism, the belief that all deities come from a source demiurge, like Kemeticism and the Dharmic traditions. Archetypal polytheism, all gods stemming from source archetypes rather than one source. This can also simply be archetypalism. Same idea, except all gods are psychological rather than having a spiritual component. And even non-theistic paganism, where one believes in gods but does not work with slash venerate slash worship gods. They may, instead, believe in and or worship Vatir ancestors or closer spirits, closer to themselves in proximity than cosmic beings beyond our humble existences. Nothing in heathenry says these are correct or prescribed. No lore, saga, second or third hand account, and no archaeological evidence states, in order to be heathen, you must believe XYZ. Not a damn thing. And even if there was some smoking gun of heathen dogma, are we obligated to appeal to the past? Now let's examine animism before our conclusion. Animism from the Latin animos meaning soul, is the belief that all things in existence have some kind of life. This is what the Vaitir are. Anthropomorphic personifications of human understanding. The Tomta, Nisa, or Gnome, for example, is a human personification of your land. A helpful little guy who accepts offerings and in turn does good for those on their land. The Slavic Domovoy is similar. A house theater anthroposed into a shape people understand. Dverger dwarves are another example. In the lore, they're often objects or stone itself. Yet, they bear similarity to the Greek Hephaestus, deformed, unattractive master smiths who forged the weapons of the gods. Likely, animism and polytheism are not only interconnected, but the same thing. It's more complicated than this, but a Vaitir can be worshipped to the level of a deity. Knowing this, can one be atheist and animist? At face value, no. But thinking outside the tight confines we've been led to believe, absolutely. An atheist may see the personification of their home as a reminder to take nothing for granted, or the land Vaitir as an allegory for environmentalism. This affects a hard theistic belief similarly. Vaitir remind us to be stewards of the land, and that we're part of nature, despite society feeling separate from it. The air we breathe, the wood making our homes, the life we consume, all are important, and modernity takes us away from understanding where it comes from. But the Vaitir are one of many reminders that we are nature and work in tandem with the natural world around us. Does it really matter if the person offering to the Vaitir believe they're real, allegorical, or some in-between mystic force we perceive with a human form? Ask yourself, do these beings require belief, or is the offering enough? Does it matter? Conclusion. Anti-atheist rhetoric is a layover from ignorance. Don't get me wrong. Anti-theist atheists can be toxic, often coming from a place of religious trauma. They lash out at theists, walking around with a purity hammer, replacing sin with beliefs. But likewise, theists bashing others for disbelief is also toxic purity testing. Honestly, if atheists can find a religion they jive with, the values of that religion can aid in their deconstruction. 
Concepts like Frith, Grith, and Inningard can help them pull away from toxic religious environments they came from and adopt healthier perspectives separate from Christian overculture. Without adopting a new worldview, atheists are subject to the Christian trappings around them. This is why they often say religion is bad without knowing any religion without a dogmatic foundation. Because, whether you like it or not, we all exist in a society influenced and molded by Christian power structures. Those biases, beliefs, and stereotypes shape our worldview hence the purity testing. But if you can find another worldview separate from the hegemony, you can deprogram that toxic bullshit you were spoon-fed. There's a myth that plagues atheism, the idea that without God one cannot be moral, and that bias can easily imprint when adopting a new form of theism. Here's the thing, you are a human person with empathy. You don't need a holy writ to not murder, steal, and violate. You don't do those things because they're fucked up and hurt people. That's instinct. When an actor dies on TV, you feel sad, even though you know it's pretend, because a part of your mammalian brain is dedicated to understanding the pain and sadness of others. Religion is not a moral foundation. Empathy is. Last thing, it's less important what you believe and more important that you question belief, that you contemplate existence and wonder what, if anything, is beyond us. There's no divine mandate within heathenry to save souls for the battle against the infernal. We're free to explore belief, free from any hand-holding dogmatic structure. Don't let anyone deny who you are or what you believe. Nobody defines your heathenry but you. There is no wrong way to heathen, only your way. You must evolve in your beliefs and actions according to what's right for you. Don't let some flapping jaw on the internet decide for you. And definitely don't let someone else interpret your path, your faith, your walk through life. The journey teaches far more than the destination. If Frodo just portaled into Mordor, he'd miss all that character growth. If Luke was born a fully formed Messiah Jedi, he wouldn't have been nearly as complete as a Jedi Master. Stagnation is the enemy of growth, and anything stagnant rots. Knowing what's right for you is also part of that journey. Teach yourself to think beyond the confines of what you've been told to believe. If it doesn't hurt anyone, who gives a shit? Be better tomorrow than you were yesterday. We are the sum of our actions, not our words.